If you've followed my work, you'll know that I'm not really a fan of just getting words down as a way of writing a first draft. I prefer to think about what I'm writing, putting care into the first draft and editing as I go. This means that the first draft is usually pretty good and editing is quick. But a lot of people say they find just getting words down to be a useful way of getting their ideas out of their head and onto the page. And I actually agree with the principle of this, I just do it differently in practice. So in this video, I'm going to share how I approach the rough draft stage in a way that's more flexible, more effective, and so much faster that it could save you months and potentially several rounds of revisions. But before we get started, if we haven't met before, my name's James Hayton, I'm a former physicist, and since 2010, I've worked full-time coaching PhD students in academic writing and general project management skills, with the overall aim of trying to make your PhD a more positive experience. So if you want to know more about what I do, check out my website at phd.academy. So, if we think about what the first draft is for, it's either to help you take stock of your ideas and figure out what you want to say, or it's for communication, to transmit ideas and information to the reader. Now, if you're just getting words down in the form of formal thesis chapters, it serves neither purpose particularly well. If you're not thinking about how you're expressing or organizing ideas, that's probably very difficult or impossible for the reader to follow. And if you write tens of thousands of words as a linear stream of consciousness, it's going to be very difficult for you to review your own ideas and edit them. It's also not a very good way of reaching new insights because if you go as fast as you can without thinking, you'll never be able to go beyond the first thing that comes to mind. So then, after months of work, when you show it to your supervisor, they'll probably tear it apart, which can be severely demotivating, which then makes the work even harder. So here's an alternative. Instead of just getting words down in a formal document, try to separate the messy process of exploration of ideas, which is for your own benefit, from the formal process of communication to the reader. And the way I do this is through mind mapping using pencil and paper. So I'll take an A4 sheet, write the title in the middle, and just throw down everything that comes to mind around that topic in no particular order. Now this is usually quick, but even doing this, I'm not going as fast as you can. I'll still pause and think, because of course I will. This idea that you have to get words down as fast as possible makes no sense whatsoever, and it just puts undue pressure on students to meet an impossible standard. So relax a little and let the ideas come at their own pace, and you might just find that once you put down all the obvious ideas, you might reach some new insights. So I consider the mind map to be the first draft and it has multiple advantages over drafting in document form. First of all, it's fast, and you can cover a lot of ground in minutes rather than days. There's also very little pressure, as nobody ever needs to see it. And that means you can be as messy as you like, and you don't have to worry about language. It also helps you identify the most important ideas that you want to get across, and it also helps you identify gaps in your knowledge or things to look up or check before you start writing. So you can be a bit more prepared and have your references ready in advance. It's also very quick to review because you can see everything on the page at a glance instead of having to read through a long and very messy draft. You can then use this initial mind map to create bullet points thinking about how you might want to structure the writing in advance, and also making some initial editorial decisions about what to include, what to emphasize, and what to leave out. And deciding in advance to leave out certain things will save you so much time compared to putting everything on the page and then trying to cut it down. Now these initial decisions might change, 
You might rearrange your bullet points, you might add to them or cut some of them as you write, but it helps to start with at least some idea of where you want to go. Then, as you're writing, you can slow down and think about how you want to express each idea and link them together, continuing to make editorial decisions as you go. Now, making those decisions does require a bit of skill, and it's not always easy, but the only way to develop that skill is by paying attention to the way you write and trying to solve problems that arise. So just a couple of quick notes before we finish. So first of all, I use pencil and paper rather than digital mind maps because it gives me some constraints. So because I have limited space, I have to stay on topic. But then I can always create other mind maps to cover other ideas. Also, you can run through multiple versions of the mind map quite quickly. Or um, if you suddenly get a flash of inspiration, you can create a new one around a new topic instead of making a mess in your formal document. And here's the thing. If you try my approach, mind mapping first, and it doesn't work for you, you haven't lost much time. But if you follow the approach of just getting words down and waiting until you have a full draft before you edit or before you even start thinking about clarity or structure, you might lose months or even years without having anything submittable to show for it. So if mind mapping first just doesn't work for you and you feel the need to just get words down, that's fine. But try to shorten the writing editing cycle. So once you've written a couple of pages, slow down, read over what you've written and tidy up instead of waiting until you've written an entire draft because it has to be easier to edit a thousand words than a hundred thousand. And the more often you go through that cycle, of reading over your work and editing it, the better you will get. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe and all of that. And as always, I'd love to hear your thoughts, comments and questions in the comments below. So that's all from me. Thank you so much for watching and happy writing.